What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can catch me on Twitter at No More Parties. And I get a little bit of a reputation in my videos, in the articles that I write, in the tweets that I fire off as some sort of hater, some sort of hot take artist in tearing down everybody's favorite players. You know, I'm I'm out on Derrick Henry. I'm low on Javante Williams. I'm fading Christian McCaffrey. I don't like Kenneth Walker's landing spot. Blah, 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 blah. Everybody thinks I hate every player. So today's video is a video where I just talk about some ADPs that I'm in love with in Dynasty. Some players that I like who are going at reasonable prices. It's not necessarily about, you know, he's going too low. It's just about like, this is a good spot for him. And I think the juice is worth the squeeze at this cost in Dynasty. I got four guys here. I got two running backs, a wide receiver, and a quarterback. Let's get into it. <laughs> First guy I want to talk about is Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Um, I'm sure the people will be fully on board with this take. Everybody else loves Clyde Edwards Hilaire also. I pulled ADP. It's not really ADP data. I got uh, this is from Keep Trade Cut, which is like a crowdsourced aggregate of rankings basically, but it's a proxy for ADP. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is the 117th ranked player on Superflex, uh, Keep Trade Cut of Superflex, and the RB29 right now. And the reason I like Clyde Edwards Lair is that I believe he's a good player. He was a good prospect. He was overdrafted for sure. Um, should not have been the first running back taken in that draft. But that's not his fault. Um, you know, he, he was good that, you know, that last year at LSU. Good pass catcher, good runner. Through his career so far with the Chiefs, he's played at a 17-game pace of 1,291 yards from scrimmage, 8 touchdowns, and 41 receptions. Based on that 17-game pace, that would have given him 218.1 PPR points last season, which would have seen him finish as the RB13 and on a per game basis, that would be 12.83 PPR points per game, which would put him at RB23. So this is a young guy who's played at an RB2 level at least, and is now being drafted as a mid RB3 in Dynasty. Other than him being like a solid player while, you know, overdrafted, he's in a good situation with the Chiefs. Um, you know, Patrick Mahomes is obviously still there. They've lost some pieces, but this is going to be a good offense again. And Daryl Williams and his 191 touches from a season ago are now gone. Like, the guys who have been in Clyde edwards Lair's way are gone. Daryl Williams is the uh, pass-blocking specialist, the leading receiver among running backs with the Chiefs last year. He's gone. He just signed with the Cardinals. And the other running backs under contract in Kansas City right now are three rookies in Teon Fleet Davis, Isaiah Pacheco, and Jerry and Ely. Teon Fleet Davis is a 220-pound guy. He caught some passes last year at Maryland, but he's not really like a, an elite pass catcher. Um, he didn't even get drafted. Um, Isaiah Pacheco is a, it, he's, you know, he's fast, but he's a, he's a grinder type. He's, he's a two-down back. He's not really a pass catcher either. He was also a later pick. And Jerrion Ely is a pass catching running back, but he's currently listed on the Chiefs roster as a wide receiver. So like who, you know, the odds that he's going to cut into some sort of workload for CEH seem low to me. And then the other dudes on the team right now are Derek Gore, who's a 27-year-old running back with eight career receptions, and Ronald Jones, who, like, notoriously cannot catch. Like, he's he's not a pass catcher. This is a very low-risk ADP, but high reward if Edwards Alaire finally gets this, like, main pass catching role, because he's been solid as a runner. Um, you know, the the kind of advanced, like, box box adjusted efficiency metrics I like to look at. He's he's been nice through two years. Um, and we know he's a quality pass catcher, even though he hasn't been able to like secure that role, given, you know, some some pass blocking issues and things like that. And so a bet on him at this price is A, low risk, and B, high reward, and C, really is just dependent on him either figuring out the pass blocking thing or them not having better options. And both of those things seem increasingly likely as, you know, these dudes fall off the depth chart, fall off the team. CEH is sticking around. He could be a value in Dynasty right now. Um, the second guy I want to talk about is a guy I talked about like a couple months ago in a video, but it's Travis Etienne, who's going as the 45th player in Superflex right now and is the RB11. And I want to, I want to approach this not from, not from like a data perspective, but just from like a narrative perspective. Like, let me walk through a thought experiment for you. First, I'm going to use Javante Williams as an example. Go back to like April, even before that, like March, pre-Russell Wilson being traded to the Broncos and pre-Melvin Gordon re-signing with the Broncos. Javante Williams played well as a rookie, um, you know, splitting carries with Melvin Gordon. I mean, he was being drafted in some places as the RB2 in Dynasty after sharing carries on a terrible team in Denver, who 
there was no reason to think that they would be better because they didn't have Russell Wilson yet. So this is like a bad team where Javante Williams had shared carries the year before. Presumably Melvin Gordon was gone. So Javante Williams is going to be the lead back. And people were like, yes, RB2 in Dynasty. So let's take that example and now apply the same logic to Travis Etienne. Obviously, Travis Etienne suffered a Liz Frank injury in, you know, before the season even started last year as a rookie. Let's explore a hypothetical where Travis Etienne stays healthy as a rookie. So A, he doesn't get hurt. He stays healthy. And let's say, you know, he's he was a good prospect. You know, he was a super dynamic runner at Clemson. He became a super dynamic receiver, decent athlete, decent size. Let's say he plays well on the Jaguars, who, you know, like the Broncos, were a terrible team. They would have been a terrible team even with Travis Etienne. But let's say he stays healthy and plays decently well. Let's say he, you know, he, he splits carries with James Robinson, who's a quality player, or he even just plays well enough to put James Robinson on the bench, or the coaching staff just defers to Travis Etienne and James Robinson doesn't end up with a large role. Why wouldn't, in that situation, you know, healthy, playing decently, you know, bad team, why wouldn't Travis Etienne be getting, or would have gotten, the same hype, the same valuation that Javante Williams was getting in a very equivalent situation? But probably even a worse situation for Javante because they, they didn't have a Trevor Lawrence, you know, level talent who, like, had a down rookie year, but represents, like, this massive upside as, like, he could reach these heights. Javante didn't have that as part of his range of outcomes. He didn't have, like, you know, Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater did not have the same upside that Trevor Lawrence carries, even though Trevor Lawrence had a poor rookie season. And so a Travis Etienne who stays healthy and plays well, like there, you know, there's no reason to think he wouldn't have played well, you know, on, on a bad team, just like Javante Williams did. Why wouldn't he be getting that same hype? But the thing is, is that James Robinson torn Achilles and might be completely out of the picture. Like people are drafting James Robinson like he's still going to be a thing, but I'm not even confident that he plays week one. Maybe he doesn't play in the season at all. Like Cam Akers came back, A, wasn't efficient, and B, that's not what we should expect from like Achilles tears going forward. Like Cam Akers is the exception, not the rule as far as, you know, length of recovery time goes. We might not see James Robinson for a while. And the other guys in the picture here for the Jaguars are Raquel Armstead, who I like, but you know, he's a long shot. Snoop Connor, who is just very blah. He could end up being the handcuff, but who knows? And then total Jag nobodies in Nathan Cottrell and Makai Sargent. Like there's already videos out there on Twitter of Travis Etienne moving well at camp. If he even replicates the efficiency, the productivity of James Robinson, and I think it's clear that, like, Travis Etienne is a more talented player than James Robinson, even though I really like Robinson as a talent. If he even replicates what James Robinson was doing, he's an RB1. There's tons of upside represented by, A, Travis Etienne's talent on his own, and B, by the untapped potential of Trevor Lawrence in this offense. Like, they're probably going to be a bad team, but James Robinson has been an RB1 on this team when they were bad. Now James Robinson might be completely removed from the scenario, and it could just be the Travis Etienne show here. And there's even more upside if Trevor Lawrence figures it out. Like, the crazier things have happened than the best quarterback prospect of all time figuring it out in year two. Smashing Travis Etienne at RB11. I wouldn't be surprised if he's being drafted in the top five running backs in Dynasty a year from now. Uh, the next guy I want to talk about is T. Higgins, who is going as the 26th player off the board and as the wide receiver seven in Dynasty. This is not a take of like, uh, T. Higgins needs to be the wide receiver four. Like, this is just a beautiful spot to get a quality wide receiver. And you know, I'm, I'm supposed to have my hater hat off, but when you're talking about like value and like this is a good spot for this guy to go, that's necessarily in the context of where other players are going. Like, it doesn't make any sense for, you know, it to be an overvalue or an undervalue or a, a, a proper value for T. Higgins at wide receiver seven if you don't like him more or less or relatively the same as the players going around him. So conversations about value are necessarily like I like this guy better than other players or I like him worse than other players. So I'm going to compare T. Higgins to some other guys going near him in drafts. He's 23 years old, which is younger than Jalen Waddell, younger than Debo Samuel, younger than A.J. Brown, and less than three months older than C.D. Lamb. He averaged 15.7 points per game last year, which is more than Jalen Waddell, more than CeeDee Lamb, more than DK Metcalf, more than AJ Brown. He finished at the wide receiver 12, which was three spots higher than where Jalen Waddell finished, which is eight spots higher than where CeeDee Lamb finished, which is 10 spots higher than where DK Metcalf finished, and which is 14 spots higher than where AJ Brown finished. He also had 110 targets last year, which is a higher per game pace than Jamar Chase had. He has a better and more certain long-term quarterback situation than nearly any of the other young and elite wide receivers in the league outside of Jamar Chase, who has the same quarterback situation as he does, 
And outside of maybe CeeDee Lamb, who, you know, you could argue Dak versus Joe Burrow. I don't really have a strong take either way, but I could see an argument for either of them. But like his quarterback situation is better than Jalen Waddles. It's better than DK Metcalf's. It's better than AJ Brown's. Like it's better than Debo Samuel's. And a lot of those guys are going ahead of him. I think DK Metcalf is actually the only guy with a later ADP right now than T Higgins. And his quarterback situation is also better than like Drake London, who's, you know, the wide receiver one for most people in this class. T Higgins is just in like a great spot. He's a great talent. He's already proven to be really good. He's young. He checks a lot of boxes and even more than some of the guys who are going ahead of him in drafts right now. He's a great value at wide receiver seven. Love T Higgins. The last guy I want to talk about is Tua Tungavailoa, who's currently being drafted as the 73rd player off the board in Superflex and is the QB 19. And similar to Travis Etienne, this is not a database take. This is a narrative-based take. We're going to walk through a hypothetical here. And I want to use the example of Alex Smith. Alex Smith came into the league, what was that, the 2005 draft, I think. You know, he was the first overall pick, really efficient in college, had some mobility, got drafted to the 49ers, and was just kind of like average for a really long time. His average points per game finish was as the QB 20 in fantasy from 2006 to 2016. So we got a solid decade of Alex Smith playing at like a completely average level, like maybe even below average in fantasy. You know, he was, you know, a game manager was, you know, quintessential game manager, Alex Smith mid QB two. He only had one QB one season during that time, which is when he was the QB 12. So barely a QB one in 2013. And then that infamous season with the chiefs where they had zero touchdown receptions by wide receivers in 2014. That was with Alex Smith, at quarterback. Like this dude was just completely average for the longest time. And then Tyreek Hill became a full-time receiver with the chiefs in 2017. And that resulted in Alex Smith being the QB three that year. Like he got some MVP buzz. It just like launched him into another stratosphere. And it was clear that like Alex Smith is a quality player who just never really had an elite talent at, you know, wide out an elite weapon and in the right situation with like a good offensive mind with Andy Reid, with, you know, elite weapons on the outside and Tyreek Hill, like this guy can be an elite fantasy quarterback, given that he has like the base level tools that allow him to be maximized in a good situation. Now back to Tua. Tua as a rookie finishes the QB 28. This last year as a second year starter finished as the QB 21. Especially last year, we have production from Tua in the context of other quarterbacks around the league that is basically the same as what we saw from Alex Smith for a decade. You know, he was, he came into the league highly touted, highly drafted. He was an efficient passer in college, prolific passer in college, has a little bit of mobility. That's not really his thing, but he's like an accurate passer. And what we've seen from Tua so far is like, he's efficient, but not super dynamic as a passer. He's been, you know, dinking and dunking to, you know, Jalen Waddle and these other dudes in the Miami offense. Now he's got Tyreek Hill just like Alex Smith got Tyreek Hill. Now he's got an excellent offensive mind in Mike McDaniel, just like Alex Smith ended up being paired with near the end of his career in Kansas City with Andy Reid. Like, who's to say that Tyreek Hill and Mike McDaniel don't unlock something in Tua, or at least allow Tua to maximize his potential with now a really quality receiving core? He might have one of the best one-two tandems at receiver in the league, especially as far as, like, maximizing Yak goes and just like open field dynamism from Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill. They also added Chase Edmonds. He's an upgrade over Miles Gaskin. Like this offense is going to be better. Tua could reap the benefits. He was universally lauded as like, yeah, he's going to be a good quarterback in the NFL. He's had some, you know, not, he hasn't even played badly. He's just like not been super exciting through two years. And now people are out on Tua. I'm in on Tua, given the new weapons, given the new coaching staff, given that I think we weren't necessarily wrong about him as a prospect. We just haven't seen him in a situation that's like conducive to him unlocking that. And we've seen in a guy like Alex Smith, who was a dink and dunk passer for a decade, gets an elite weapon that fully unlocks him. Tua could be that guy this year. So those are my favorite values in Dynasty right now. Some of my favorite ADPs, some of my favorite players, Travis Etienne, Clyde edwards alaire T. Higgins, Tua Tungavailoa. Smashing the button on those guys every time. Thanks for checking out the video. Hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment. Catch me next time. Deuces.